listening to The Critical Hour on Radio Sputnik. I'm your host, Garland Nixon, here with my co-host, Dr. Wilmer Leon. Thank you, Garland. Cold War connections between Russia and Africa are re-emerging as Russia announces that they will be training pilots from the Central African Republic. Joining us to discuss this and more, we've got Dr. Gerald Horn. Dr. Horn is a professor of history at the University of Houston in Texas. He's an author, historian, and researcher. Dr. Horn, welcome back to The Critical Hour. Thank you for inviting me. I'm going to actually go with two stories that I think are inextricably linked. First one, Russia defense delegation holds talks with African allies. High-ranking officials met with the leaders of Mali and Niger, according to the military regimes of both countries. And, uh, well, let me find the other one. Oh, Russia plans to start retraining Central African Republic uh, military pilot uh, pilot troops this year. Moscow intends to launch the professional retraining of Central African Republic's military of, of their military pilots and ground personnel to operate aircraft this year. It sounds to me like uh, they're getting the band back together. <laughs> you know, Russia's uh, history, uh, the Soviet Union's history during the Cold War in Africa is Say, very rich, shall we say, as the U.S. empire pushes a new Cold War narrative, it seems to me that this is the um, the natural outcome of it. Dr. Horn. Well, there's obviously something to what you say. And I think it's important for your audience to recognize that the North Atlantic powers are getting tipped at the post by Russia in no small measure because they're terribly conflicted. What I mean is that if you look in the neighborhood, you'll see that the ally of the United States and France, speaking of the United Arab Emirates and many of the Gulf Arab states, are involved up to their keister in interfering in the internal affairs of nations like the Central African Republic. Whereas Russia has to combat the same religious zealots, oftentimes sponsored by U.S. imperialism, on their own soil, and not to mention in the vicinity of speaking of Syria for example. And we also know that the North Atlantic countries, particularly France, have made a hash out of their former colonies, like the Central African Republic. They have looted the CAR of one of its most precious resources, of speaking of diamonds. They have not been effective in terms of combating any insurgency that on the surface involves Christian forces versus Muslim forces. Note here the aforementioned conflict that the North Atlantic countries have in terms of their alliances with the Gulf Arab states, which are backing the so-called Muslim forces. And you see some of that in neighboring Sudan as well, where famine is descending, not least because, once again, the United Arab Emirates a close ally of the United States, is backing the so-called Rapid Support Forces, which is the equivalent or peer of the Navy SEALs, which in turn is combating the regular uh, Sudanese military. And then going further in the neighborhood, we turn to Cameroon, which has an insurgency all of its own, this time ostensibly a linguistic insurgency involving those who look to France and the French language uh, as their guiding light and those who look to English and the British as their guiding light. And the leader of that country, Paul Bia, is approaching 90 years old. He's been in office for decades now. He probably spends more time at his estate in Switzerland than he does in Cameroon. And this has allowed that insurgency to spread, which inexorably is spreading into neighboring Central African Republic. We also notice that Kenya, uh, which is now styling itself as a kind of deputy sheriff for U.S. imperialism in the heart of Africa, has also been accused of being involved in the internal affairs of the Central African Republic, just as we see the Kenyan police forces or headed to the Caribbean, Haiti in this case, and going due east, we see that in Mozambique, in the northern part of that Southeast African nation, you see that there is, too, a religious insurgency that is backed by allies of U.S. imperialism. Of course, if you go back 
to the early history of that insurgency, you'll find that U.S. right-wingers were in on the ground floor uh, with regard to that particular insurgency. And that has led to the government of Rwanda uh, intervening on behalf of the regime in Maputo. Uh, but alas, they have not been able to squash that particular insurgency. And so we understand why many African nations are now looking to Russia for assistance because they see Russia as being less conflicted, given the fact that Russia has its own religious zealots that it's seeking to combat. And this is very serious because if you look at the Sahel countries, which are creeping ever closer to Moscow, at the same time, these Sahel countries, speaking of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, and to a certain degree, Chad as well, have various kinds of religious insurgencies promulgated by forces that call themselves Muslim. And so this is a spreading problem. We've even seen there being manifested in Benin on the Atlantic coast. And of course, in Africa's giant, speaking of Nigeria, in the north of that country, uh, there is the Boko Haram, another group of religious zealots uh, who are wreaking havoc in terms of kidnapping school children, school girls in particular. And so uh, I dare say that it won't be long before the government in Abuja uh, emulates and emulates its neighbors, for example, in Niger, and reach out to Russia for expert assistance in combating Boko Haram. South Africa's ruling party holds coalition talks. Officials have met with five political parties to discuss the possibility of forming a coalition government. The ruling ANC announced uh, yesterday after losing its parliamentary majority in last week's elections. How how do you see, do you have any insight into how, how do you see this playing out and can you see behind the scenes the United States hand in um, some some uh, political parties or, or organizations holding greater sway than others? Well, it's no secret that U.S. imperialism is in the corner of the neo-apartheid party, the party of descendants of settlers, speaking of the Democratic Alliance, which improved its vote total from 20 to 22 percent. The United States would like to see the ANC go into a coalition with the DA, but that would probably lead to a split and a rift within the ranks of the ANC, with many militants hotly opposed to having anything to do with this neo-apartheid party. A problem is that the so-called MK party, founded and pushed by former South African President Jacob Zuma, got 14 to 15 percent of the vote. But Jacob Zuma is on a revenge tour because he adamantly refuses to go into coalition with the ANC as long as they retain their current leader, Cyril Ramaphosa. The ANC does not feel that Mr. Zuma should be given veto power over who their leadership is. And in any case, uh, there is this idea rampant in the ANC that one of the reasons why their vote total plummeted from 57 percent to 40 percent was precisely because of the mismanagement of President Jacob Zuma in a 10-year period lasting from about 2008 to 2018. And then because of the various criminal charges that he's facing that are quite credible, he's been accused credibly in 2021, of leading a mass insurrection in Durban, his home base, which led to the deaths of hundreds, believe it or not. Not to mention the fact that Mr. Zuma has broken with the anti-tribalism and non-racialism of the ANC by touting his Zulu credentials. A disproportionate percentage of his votes were from KwaZulu Natal. Uh, he is a wild card that does not uh, bode well for the future of South Africa. And then there are the economic freedom fighters. Uh, under Julius Malema, which got about 8, 9, 10 percent of the vote, they do not see it as a conditioned president 
to dislodge Mr. Ramaphosa as a condition for joining a coalition. But many in the ANC are suspicious of Mr. Malema because he was a close backer of Jacob Zuma in 2008 when the second South African president, Thabo Mbeki, was unceremoniously recalled. Quite notoriously, uh, Mr. Malema said that he would kill for uh, Jacob Zuma. That was taken quite seriously. So South Africa faces a very difficult environment, not least because U.S. imperialism is unhappy with South Africa because of its bringing the case before the International Court of Justice against U.S. ally Israel, because of South Africa's close alliance with Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, the BRICS, for example, and also the U.S. ambassador, a charge false a few months ago that South Africa was sending military materiel to help Russia on the battlefield, which he had to walk back, but it was emblematic of the tense relations between Pretoria and Washington that are going to be manifested severely in coming days and weeks. Lastly, TASS reports Russia may arm U.S. enemies just like Washington does with Ukraine. Now let the U.S. and its allies feel the direct impact of the use of Russian weapons by third parties. We can only guess who those were, but uh, I'll be quite frank. I figured they were going to respond, were going to respond, but I didn't see that coming. Your thoughts, Dr. Horn? Well, I would encourage and urge the hawks and neocons in Washington to tread carefully. I've heard more talk about World War III in recent days and weeks than I heard during my lifetime. Uh, We see these chihuahuas, uh, speaking of the Baltics, uh, Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia, uh, chirping uh, madly about uh, World War III. Uh, We see the same sentiment emerging from Poland. Uh, We also see that in Ukraine, which, by the way, has an illegitimate government, since Mr. Zelensky should have stepped down on May 20th and May 21st, uh, they too are egging on uh, World War III. And I would urge Mr. Zelensky and his comrades to look at the recent report from the World Bank, which suggested that by some measures, Russia now has the fourth largest economy on planet Earth. As we speak, the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum is unfolding uh, in that the Russian city with a number of African leaders, including the president of Zimbabwe, making an appearance. And so uh, I would urge and encourage the hawks and the neocons to cool their jets because they're getting in way over their head. Dr. Gerald Horn is a professor of history at the University of Houston in Texas. He's an author, historian, and researcher.